I wanted to see if anyone on the panel had another roadblock or hurdle or challenge that they'd like to at least float with the with the group here to put that on people's radar as something to be attentive to. I think I'd like to raise a point which has kind of been danced around a couple of times, and that is um, this question of where do you store it? And um, the we've seen the we've had some discussion about the pros and cons of things being on campus versus in the cloud. We've had some discussion about speed of access, cost of that. Um, you know, how do you how do you um, how do you figure out what's going to be the most the the bat that, that that balance of you want something to be to be secure long term, um, and yet also uh, affordable <laughs> and accessible, um, and um, and it feels to me like that's often at the crux of some of these really difficult problems that we we end up um, facing, and and there's no perfect answers, and you know we're all we're all grown ups and we know that, but I but I wondered if there was just any reflections other panelists wanted to make on that before we finished up. I'll jump in again. Uh, <laughs> data storage tends to fall kind of um, over to research IT and VUIT. Um, and you're right, it, it's a complicated answer and there really is no one size fit all ever. Um, uh, but to your point, I think just kind of jumping in and, and, and getting on a consultation with um, either Michael or Jeff or myself, um, you know, between the three of us, we're usually able to, um, to come up with something. Um, so to the extent that you want to do that and you're interested about the options and weighing through the matrix of decisions that goes along with that, uh, please reach out at any time. And, and I might add that, uh, you know, thinking back to the life cycle model, part of the, the advantage of thinking about things holistically like that is that, you know, you consider storage in relationship to compute, for example, or to like the question of getting things to a repository, as we discussed earlier. And, uh, you know, it, it may be that uh, certain models work really well for, uh, you know, a particular scenario, but then they actually have distinct disadvantages for other scenarios. So I think part of this is, is you know, thinking about each of these activities, not just in isolation, but in connection with each other. Um, and I would also say part of this, I think, will help you decide where you want to develop some of your own expertise. You know, we don't expect anyone to develop the expertise of our BYT colleagues or research IT colleagues. Um, but I think once you decide sort of here's the area that I'm going to be working with, perhaps in the cloud, and this goes to, to Daniel's question, Daniel can tell you that he's made huge investments in, in learning how to operate in the cloud. And I think um, you know, once you think about the environment that you're going to be working in, maybe it's RedCap, you're going to make an investment in, in learning how RedCap works and how to work with the APIs there and things like that. So I think part of this is also helping you to plan uh, in your own professional development uh, where you should be spending your time because we all have very limited time and we don't want to just devote it, you know, to everything that might be possible, but, but it's to the specific activities that it's going to advance your research. With that, I'm going to um, hand it over to Olivia to wrap us up with a few concluding remarks. Olivia, you're muted. I'm going to be very brief because I realize that we are almost at the top of the hour. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I, I actually come from a very non-data background. I've been doing this for about 10 years. Um, and so I always find it useful to translate all of this stuff back into just very plain English. Um, and to say, you know, the, the research data management is about thinking through how are you gonna create and get your data? How are you gonna use your data? How are you gonna keep it safe? And then how are you going to make it accessible for the future? And if you kind of can, that's really in a nutshell, that, that life cycle that, that Cliff gave us. And what we would really encourage you to do as you're planning or implementing your, your research is, um, is just to think about each of those, those steps. And what you've heard today is that the, you know, that, 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 if you, um, as you, as you embark on them, if you have particular questions, um, we do have a lot of resources. There is no one right path through this national park, as Derek called it, um, and that's fine. Everybody has a different experience, um, but but we are all here to try and um, and support. So I hope that this has given you kind of a sense of of, of who your rangers are and how you might. Um, 
uh, uh, access some information. I know Derek's going to pull together a lot of those resources that were in the chat and provide those um, so that, that people can access them in the future. So thank you to all the panelists. Thank you to Derek for, um, for being our lead ranger today and pulling us through. And thank you to you all for attending um, and your great questions and your engagement with this topic.